All right, everybody. I'm going to go through a few things here. And we'll, uh, Anderson and Chris Weidman should be here soon. Let's start with the, the attendance of the night was 12,399. The gate was 4.826 million. The fight of the night was uh, Edgar versus Oliveira. They both won $50,000. The other fight of the night is Seaver and Swanson. They won $50,000 too. And if I gotta tell you who the knockout of the night was, you're stupid. Uh, we we're formally announcing four major pay-per-view tonight, uh, pay-per-view events to close out 2013. UFC 165, Jones versus Gustafsson, September 21st at the Air Canada Center in Toronto. UFC 166, Velasquez versus Dos Santos, October 19th at the Toyota Center in Houston. UFC 167, St. Pierre versus Hendricks, November 16th at the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas. And UFC 168, Ronda Rousey versus Tate 2, December 28th here at the MGM Grand. We're also announcing a multi-city press tour with those eight fighters that will kick off on July 29th. And we'll be hitting the Bay Area, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, New York, Houston, Dallas, Chicago, Montreal, Stockholm, Sweden, London, England, and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And that's all I got. So Dana, got the first question. Dana, just to clarify on that, because earlier in the week you said you weren't sure if Rousey and Tate is the main event. That will be the main event. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Can we get your thoughts on uh, tonight? Obviously, uh, uh, you know, a, a crazy night. Uh, seeing a lot of talk of, of a fix. People saying it didn't look right. Uh, have you seen any of that? Do you hear any of that? People are saying what? That it was a fix. That there oh, was yeah, something. Oh yeah, it was fixed. You yeah. know, especially... that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Right. Okay. That is just stupid. Now, with that out of the way, talk about your reaction to the fight. Obviously, it was a shocking result. I think even people that thought Whiteman was going to win didn't necessarily see it play out that way. What were your thoughts on it? Well, you know, a lot of people felt the reason that Chris Weidman would win is because of his ground game and his wrestling. He took Anderson Silva down immediately, and Anderson did a great job of defending uh, the submissions, got back to his feet, and there's no doubt that he, he got into Chris's head by the end of the first round, yet he kept doing it throughout the entire second round and uh, ended up getting clipped and knocked out. Chris Weidman kept his composure, didn't freak out, panic, or, 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 you know, a lot of guys will mentally shut down and go, what the hell am I doing? I'm in here with Anderson Silva. You know what I mean? I can't even hit the guy. He's playing with me right now. And he didn't. He stayed focused, kept moving forward, and kept trying to finish until he did. You said coming into this fight that a loss meant all those super fights were off the table, that it was all done. Yeah. Is, is that still your feeling? Yeah. I mean, that fight cost uh, George St. Pierre and John Jones and Anderson Silva a lot of money, you know? And the, the, the Roy Jones talk and all that, that's... Yeah, well, the, 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 you know, in, in that, in, in those super fights, he was the link to, to both of them. Right. So, there and, you go. And just last question, if I could, for you. Anderson said in, in the cage that he wasn't interested in a rematch. Have you had any discussion with him? No, I mean, the, let me tell you what. Yeah. Anderson Silva has lost, uh, ha, has lost fights on his record. Anderson Silva doesn't know what it feels like to lose. It's been a very long time since he's lost, so I'm sure that's sinking in, and, you know, he's got he's to deal with that for a few days, and I guarantee you, no matter what he says publicly, and we've had this conversation before, uh, you know, I guarantee you there's nothing he wants more than that rematch with Chris Weidman. And just one, if I could, for Cub. Obviously, what happened tonight is going to probably take a little bit away from what you accomplished. But I know you were saying you wanted to, uh, to get into a title shot. Um, do you feel like you did enough to earn that? And, and what do you think should be next for you? Um, yeah, I think I did everything I needed to do. And uh, like I said, I'm just trying to get the, the fans to, to back me on it and let them decide. Um, Dana does a good job of listening to the fans. And if they speak up and they want me to, to be the next one in line, then... Uh, you know, it could happen. Dana, can, I get your, can, you get, can we get your take on what you think about Cub getting the title shot right now? I think, I think Cub looked awesome tonight. That fight was sick. Both guys went in there and were determined, and both guys wanted to win, and both guys fought their asses off from the first round to the last round, and, and, and Cub poured it on when he needed to. And, and yeah, I think he, he deserves 
many things other than $50,000 tonight. I think he's a stud. He always goes and delivers. He, he's, uh, you know, I, I talk to these guys after the fight, and I'm always telling them, be the guy that gets noticed. You know, he got noticed tonight, man. I mean, he, he's just the kid. I, I couldn't say enough good things about him. We'll see what happens. You know, Pettis is, you know, Pettis is flapping out there in the wind, too. The kid could fight at 55. He could fight at 45. We'll see what happens. Hey, Dana, right down here to your left, where you just were. Hey. It, it, was, it was, you know, one of the best, the best run in the UFC. We just saw how it ended. Are you disappointed at all the way in which it ended? Are, are you almost feel like, like we were all kind of robbed of a legitimate Anderson Silva loss to end this streak? Anderson Silva is so talented. You know, the guy knows what he's capable of doing. The guy knows uh, what kind of punishment he's ca capable of taking. And he, uh, if he won tonight, we'd all be going, holy shit, i never seen anything like that. He's the greatest, you know what I mean? He got clipped tonight. He, 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 he decided to fight the way that he wanted to fight. He wanted to, you know, we've seen this before when he does this, and, you know, it's part of the reason he's been called great and everything else, the things that he's able to do. But tonight it caught up with him, you know. I don't think that I saw anything tonight where the big question that I'd say is, when does Anderson Silva show up and look 38 years old? He looked great tonight, right up until the end. Is there any comparison whatsoever to what happened in Abu Dhabi? Does, it, does this night feel the same, similar at all to what no, you experienced? No, I mean, it, it doesn't feel like an Abu Dhabi night. If it was an Abu Dhabi night, we'd all be sitting here going, wanting to kill ourselves. That was a horrible night. I mean, that fight was terrible. This fight wasn't terrible. This fight was very exciting. You know, Anderson Silva got taken down immediately, and that's what everybody said was going to be. That was going to be the end of the fight once Chris Weidman got his hands on him. He took him down. Chris Weidman hit him with big shots from the top. He, he had him in a couple of different submissions. Anderson got out, popped back up to his feet, um, you know, got into his head in the first round, then came out and continued to do it and got knocked out in spectacular fashion. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody got robbed of anything. It was a great fight. Dana, you don't think that was disrespectful of Anderson to, to do that to Chris and, and also to the, the fans who paid money to come here to see him? Fans came here to see a fight. They saw a pretty great fight tonight. You know what I mean? I don't, is it disrespectful? I, I don't know. This is fighting. How the hell do you disrespect somebody in a fight? I'm going to punch you in the face and try to knock you out. I'm going to try to kick your leg off. And if I grab your arm, I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to strangle you if I get your neck. But I don't want to disrespect you. But when you, when you promote fights, you use respect all the time. You, so many times you said it. He's respectful. He's this, he's that. So... How can you say it on the one hand? Well, I think what Weidman did to him was pretty damn disrespectful, too. No, that's part of the competition, right? Right. Okay, so, but I guess what I'm saying is, I mean, and you're saying it was a great fight. You know, he wasn't fighting. I, mean, I was, my it. fucking heart was in my stomach. I, my hands were sweating. My jacket is soaked. I almost fainted twice. It's a pretty damn good fight. So, so when a guy has just got his hands down and saying, hit me in the chin and doing that, that... That wasn't a fight like Cub Swanson fight. Or, this guy's you know, the you know. greatest fighter I, of all time. I agree, but what he did tonight. The greatest was... fighter of all time, and he was out there doing his thing, and his thing didn't work tonight. Pretty fucking exciting. So, so you had no problem. If Wyman comes up here and says he's, he was angry or felt disrespected, because I think he said in the cage he was pissed off by it, you, you would have an issue with what he said then? No. He has the right to feel however he wants to feel. Me as a fight fan? I'm exhausted. So would you want to see that again and, you know, that same type of... I wish we could do that fight again next Saturday. That, it, well, yeah, I know. The rematch will be big. But, I mean, from the, that type of fight you would want to see again? I, 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 can, I can almost guarantee you and make a promise. I really doubt you will see that kind of fight again if this fight happens again. Hey, Dan, I want to talk about Chris. Um, obviously, this is a big night for him. Uh, he said he would win this fight. Uh, and, but in some ways, do you think we're talking about Anderson. We're talking about Anderson and, and his uh, run through the UFC. Uh, could this be an opportunity for Chris Weidman to, to start uh, his run through the UFC? Are we look, possibly looking at another, the next great uh, champion? Yeah. So a man of few words called tonight, Matt Serra. <laughs> and I told you he was going to do it. I told you he was going to do this, and I told you that, and I told you this, and I told you that. 
and he's going to hold on to the belt longer than Anderson Silva did. I want to ask that same question to Chris because how you doing, man? Uh, What's up, buddy? All right. You, um, before this fight, you said it wasn't about just winning this fight. You knew you'd win, uh, but about what you would do afterward. Uh, does the hard work, in, in essence, start now? Because you have to continue to be great. It's crazy, man. I, I, I would think that at this point I'd be able to just sit back and relax. Instantly, I'm already like, I'm freaking hungry, man. I got, I got to get better. I feel like I still didn't really look at my best. So I'm just really excited to go back out there and freaking keep, keep holding on this bell as long as I possibly can. Uh, Chris, right in front of you. Hey. After Anderson first dropped his hands and tried to pull you into a fight, what went through your head? You know, we, we expected him to do things like that. He's done it plenty of times uh, in a lot of fights. And he does, it's, it's not, I don't see him as being cocky. You know, I see him as men, trying to mentally defeat you in there. And that's just part of the warfare. It's, it's like any other type of style. It's, 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 it works for him. Uh, but I, I try not to let it get in my head. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to keep walking forward, walking forward. I'm throwing my punches. I'm going to keep moving forward. And, uh, and then it got to the point where he was doing it. And I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm freaking, I'm hitting him, you know. And uh, I believe in my power, that, you know, Ray Longo, my striking. Uh, I, I do really good. You know, we brought all these national champion boxes, and I'm, they, they never came back for sparring. I believe in my, I believe in my stand-up. But again, again, I'm going against Anderson Silva, so everybody telling you know, you want to go for your takedowns. <clears throat> but when you, when you mix it up, things like that happen. And what was the advice from your corner during the, first, during the break between the rounds? Uh, I honestly wouldn't even be able to tell you. I have no idea. I was practicing. was just working on my breathing. Just last one. The two greatest upsets in the history of the UFC are in the family. One with Matt Serra, one with you. How does it feel as a team to get another upset of this big? Uh, no, it's, it's huge. You know, he, Matt Serra has been an inspiration uh, from day one. You know, I'm blessed to have amazing people around me. I'm from Long Island, New York. Never left. As soon as I got out of Hashi University, Matt Serra's Academy, Ray Longo's Academy was right there. Henzo Gracie's Academy. I'm blessed with great people who really want to see me succeed. And... Uh, It's you, it, I wouldn't be where I'm at without them. Uh, Chris, first and foremost, congratulations on your win. Um, uh, to your right, down here. Um, uh, in terms of the fight, uh, in the first round, you were doing very well before any of the histrionics. You, know, you took him down, you landed some shots, you went for some submissions. It was looking like it might be setting up for a fight where you would win throughout the fight and, and you know, take it away from him. Obviously, uh, a lot of people and a lot of the talk after what happened in the second round is instead more on Anderson and what Anderson did and the idea that essentially Anderson beat himself in spite of how good you looked early on. Does that frustrate you at all that, that you know, perhaps he took that from you to a degree that rather than the story in a lot of people's minds being that you beat this guy after so many years of dominance that instead in a lot of people are thinking rather about what Anderson did rather than what you did? Anderson Silva has won his fights, a lot of his fights because of what he did and what I caught him on. That's, it's not like, he's not letting his defense down. It looks like he is, but he, he knows exactly what he's doing. And uh, I capitalized on it. Uh, a lot of other guys couldn't do that. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to take that away from myself. <laughs> okay, uh, Evelyn from Globe Sports, uh, Brazil. Uh, I want to ask Dana, uh, if Anderson doesn't want the, the rematch right now, does Vitor Belfort deserve a title shot? I'm not even thinking about that right now. Anderson Silva has done what nobody else has ever done in this company. You know, he's done things that nobody has ever done in the sport. You know, he, he's, uh, you believe me, Vitor, I must have 172 text messages from Vitor Belfort on my phone <laughs> right now, okay? Uh, he, he's a man of God, but I'm pretty sure he was swearing at me in a few of them. Uh, <laughs> I just kept texting him back, rematch. Okay, uh, Chris, uh, did you feel disrespected by uh, Anderson Silva uh, for the way that he acted today? Yeah, no, again, I, I don't feel like he's disrespecting his opponents out there. I, I think he's trying to get a mental edge and mentally defeat him and then wait for you to get angry and throw a hard punch and then counterpunch you. He's a counterpuncher. <clears throat> so um, I don't feel disrespected. You know, I just, uh, we, we went in there and we fought. Anderson, uh, I'm going to ask in Portuguese. Uh, um monte de todo mundo no Brasil está assim chocado com o que aconteceu. É, eu queria saber se você poderia explicar para eles a sua resposta. Eu sei que você já falou na TV lá, mas o pessoal está perguntando aqui pela internet. Eles ficaram muito surpresos com a forma com que você lutou hoje. E se você poderia mandar um recado, explicar para o Brasil o que aconteceu, por favor. 
my man. Well, the question was basically asking Anderson to speak on the, on the fight, and everyone in Brazil is pretty upset right now, so she wants him to speak on the fight. Então, eu costumo falar sempre para os meus treinadores que a gente dá o nosso melhor, né? A gente procura dar o nosso melhor. Eu dei o meu melhor, estava tentando induzir o Chris a fazer o que eu precisava para imprimir o meu jogo. E, em determinado momento, ele acabou conseguindo imprimir o jogo dele e colocou um golpe que pegou, não tem como. Luta é luta, a gente é, tenta dar o nosso melhor, é claro que eu não queria perder. Eu não treinei para perder e nunca fiz nenhuma, nenhum tipo de, 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 de movimento para para me vangloriar sobre meus adversários. Luta é luta e eu dei o meu melhor. Treinei quatro meses para essa luta, só que ele foi melhor hoje. Eu acho que a gente tem que respeitar e, e o UFC tem um novo campeão agora. Eu sempre digo que eu faço o meu melhor e hoje eu sinto que eu fiz o meu melhor. Eu tentei induzir o induce Chris a jogar o meu jogo e isso não funcionou. He uh, threw some shots that landed. I got caught. So obviously my game plan didn't work tonight and uh, I can't make any excuses. Uh, it is what happened. I never uh, would uh, fight a, a fight to lose and I trained four months for this fight to win this fight. So it is what happened. I lost the fight, a fight's a fight. Anderson, you've had one of the great runs in any sport. Will this loss bring an even better Anderson Silva to challenge Chris Weidman for the middleweight championship? And if so, Chris, are you prepared to take on that Anderson Silva? Who's That's first? for you first, Anderson. Essa luta vai te tornar o um melhor lutador ainda para voltar com a revanche contra o Wyman? Olha só, toda a luta eu estou tentando melhorar. É, é, não foi a primeira vez que eu perdi na minha vida. E é normal, para mim, perder ou ganhar é normal. Lógico que a gente é, 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 quer sempre ganhar, a gente quer sempre vencer, a gente treina para vencer. Mas uh, uh, eu estou despreocupado quanto a isso. Eu fiz bem o meu trabalho, uh, o Chris foi melhor do que eu, e é natural isso. Né? A gente tem os melhores lutadores do planeta nesse evento, e o Chris é um deles. You know, this is not the first time I've lost in my life, and uh, win and losing, you fight out there. I, I would never go out there to lose. Obviously, you always want to win, and they're the best fighters in the world are in the UFC, and Chris is one of them. I got a question for you, Dana. I noticed at the end of Frankie's fight, you were on your feet cheering. I'm just curious your reaction to that, and if if you know it was clear that he, I thought it was clear that he won the fight, but just your opinion on that fight and how you feel to have Frankie back in the W column. Yeah, I was cheering because it was an awesome fight. You know, the, both guys fought um, with a lot of heart. It was a great fight, and, and that's why they got they both got fifty thousand dollars. But um, yeah, I think I think that that, that Frankie looked great tonight. Um, of course, everybody, everybody's running over to me going, he's too small, he's got to go to 135. Uh, but he, uh, he, looked, he looked awesome tonight, and Oliveira proved that he's, he's, a, he's a talent to be reckoned with, man. That kid's gonna, just going to get better and better and better. So it was a great fight. Loved it. And so, Frankie, you're staying where you are right now, yeah? If I got to hear Dana talking about 35, I don't know. I think I'm retiring. <laughs> nice, nice. And just a quick question for you, Mark. Uh, it took some time. You didn't come out right after the fight. Uh, I heard possibly that, you know, your hand is not great. So can you tell us a story on that and just how it feels to get the win after such a long road back? Yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of hurts right now. I was punching him really hard, yeah. and he wasn't going away. So uh, I tried to finish him, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's broken or what, but it um, just hurts a little bit. Um, and it feels, it feels amazing to be back. Uh, I went through a lot of stuff, and I just say adversity is the dust that polishes a diamond, and, you know, it was my time to shine tonight, and uh, I did. So um, I just I love being in there. It felt like home. It really did. Thank you. Thank you. This one's for Frankie. Frankie, how do you feel about, uh, you know, not only getting your first win after, after three losses, but getting your first win at featherweight? Yeah, you know, it feels good, especially after three losses in a row. <clears throat> a win feels good anyway, but especially after getting, you know, three losses in a row. So, uh, you know, being at that's my first win of 30, 45, very good. All right. And Dana, uh, what did you think of the uh, Andrew Craig and uh, Chris Lieben fight? And, uh, you know, after Chris Lieben's performance, are you, are you thinking about having kind of that career conversation with him at this time? Yeah, he texted me uh, after his fight, you know, and said, I'm so sorry. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. And, you know, and I text him back, I love you, kid. You know, I really do. I love Chris Lieben, and uh, kid's been through a lot in his life, and he always bounces back, and uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, he, you know, his style of fighting, 
you know, isn't a healthy style of fighting. You know, he, he he's a, throws big shots, and you know, he, he he doesn't have he doesn't have what you call hand speed. But if he catches you with one of those clubs, he knocks you out. You know, um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it yet, but I really care about the kids, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, down here, uh, Anderson, just, hey. Um, you, you touched on this briefly, but uh, the, um, uh, the, you, the, the, the style that you, uh, the, the, you fought with as, as the fight went on, um, was that a specific attempt to get Chris out of his uh, wrestling attack? And, and keep the fight standing, where theoretically uh, the fight would more uh, suit you. Você falou rápido disso, mas o estilo que você impôs hoje era para tirar um pouco o wrestling disso e deixar a luta em pé onde você ia se dar melhor? Não, é, como eu havia dito, né? Os, os lutadores que se apresentam aqui no UFC são os melhores do mundo. E eu acho que a luta em pé é, é uma luta que o público gosta de ver mais. E o Chris foi melhor, e é isso que a gente tem que, tem que focar agora no novo campeão. Like I said before, the best fighters in the world are in the UFC, and I think that the fans uh, enjoy watching a, a striking match. I like to see guys on their feet, but uh, you got to respect the new champion. Uh, and if I could, a quick one for Chris. Uh, just to your left. Yeah. Um, what, uh, in those moments immediately after the fight, um, do you do you remember at all what was going through your head? You know, as, as Bruce was you know announcing you as new champion, belt getting wrapped around your waist. You know what what's what's going through your head at the, those specific moments? Uh, it just felt really surreal, and I was like, just get my wife, my my parents, everybody in the cage, please, just yelling to people. And uh, you know, it was it was a great feeling, man. You know, I, I've envisioned being here. So many times since I since I got decided to do this sport, and uh, <clears throat> I tried to make it as real as possible leading up, but um, it still feels a little far fetched no matter what. You keep trying to reel it in and make it feel uh, more believable, and so anytime you know I, what I just accomplished, it feels surreal, you know, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It still hasn't settled in for sure. Chris, this question for Chris. Chris over here, oh. over here for Noticias and Rolling Stone magazines from Argentina. Um, at the end of the fight, you greeted Anderson, and you spoke something to him. You told him something. What was it? We really want to know what you told him at the end of the fight. Is it when, uh, at what point? I spoke to him like a bunch of times, I think. Right, right after? When he was on the ground still? Yep. I, think I, I didn't know he was that hurt. I was trying to ask if he wanted help up. That was it. Uh, Listen, I, I, you go in a cage with a guy like Anderson, so I, you, it's almost, you develop like, such a respect because like a love. I felt... You like I'm hu hugging this dude like I love him, you know. I don't know, uh, but you know, I just I felt I feel for him. I'm obviously happy for myself, happy for my family, and I, I feel for him also. Chris, and last night when you put your head in on the pillow, what do you think? Last night? Yeah. <laughs> uh, last night I was just like I want to go to sleep. Don't think about the fight too much, and uh, just watch some TV. Fell asleep. I slept pretty good. Hey, Chris, over here. Right back in the back. Hey. Uh, it seemed like your camp was sort of anticipating you might see some of that egging on, him telling yeah. you to come get him, that sort of thing. When it started to happen, I, I know that Ray was wanting you to kind of punch him in the chest and things. It looked like you tried that a little bit. Yeah. Did you see, what were you seeing and what were you thinking when, you, when that was going on? And did you see the opening to clip him as you did? Uh, yeah, you know, when he was doing that, I was telling myself, don't get mad, don't get fooled into his game, you know focus on, you know, my punches, the takedowns, but like I said before, I, I do have, uh, my stand-up is, is good, you know, and I feel like, I, you know, I've, I've gone with top world-class uh, boxers and world-class kickboxers, have done really well just in that, um, but again, you know, the game plan was to punch to my takedown, so, but uh, I was just, at, it was a point where he just, I was like, you know what, I got long arms, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm going for this, and I knew he was going to tilt back, he used his, his uh, hips to move back, and I'm just going to go for it, and went for it, and got it. Cool. And just one for Anderson as well. Um, I noticed a lot of, the, a lot of um, your corner guys afterward were pretty, pretty sad, pretty beat up and shocked even as you kind of went over there. Some guys were in tears. What did you say to those guys? What did you guys talk about backstage? O que você falou para os teus corners, para os teus treinadores, quando acabou a luta? Muitos deles estavam chorando. O que você falou para eles? Poxa, eu nem me lembro, mas eu... eu... Eu falei que não era para ninguém chorar, eu acho que o trabalho deles foi feito, 
Mas é difícil, né? Porque é, lá dentro quem luta é a gente. Os treinadores podem dar o 100% deles fora, mas quando a gente sobe lá é a gente. Então, é claro que a gente... Eu, como treinador, às vezes fico, fico um pouco triste, um pouco frustrado quando acontecem algumas coisas como essa que aconteceu comigo. Mas eu disse para todos eles ficarem tranquilos, é coisa que acontece, todo mundo fez seu trabalho, eu treinei 100%. E estou feliz com o, que eu, com o que eu fiz, com o trabalho que eu fiz. E o meu adversário foi melhor do que eu, não tem muito o que falar. I told them there's no reason to cry for them to relax. Their work was done, but in the end, the fighters, the one that goes in there, the trainers can't do anything. Their work was well done, it was 100%. I trained 100%. But uh, my opponent won the fight, and, and there's no reason for them to be upset. This is for, for Chris. Chris, you know. A ton of it. Um, at the end of last year, then you got injured and things like that. How did that all affect as far as preparation and just your mental state, you know, coming 